Hi, so one of the tips that uh, I got from quite a few people um, to get unstuck if you're stuck or to get out of a creative rut or to uh, get rid of the creative block, whatever you want to call it. I got a lot of tips and that's really, really great. Um, it helps. And one of the tips was you just have to show up. And actually, that is what I'm doing. I'm in my studio right now and sitting at my drawing table and um, I just draw. And I have to say, I feel like I am slowly getting out of it. So I'm, I'm making progress for sure. Uh, that doesn't mean that I uh, need to stop investigating and I need to stop letting go of I want to draw, I want to make art, it has to be awesome. <laughs> so this is a lesson learned from uh, my creative blog. Also, um, I will take this opportunity to talk to Nina Johansson, who is um, going to teach in a brand new course in Sketchbook School that we will release early 2017. So we'll have to wait for that just a little bit, but I'm going to have a talk with her, um, see what her point of view is on a creative block and how she would deal with it. Also, I've been doing some reading, which is really nice. If you, yeah, you know, I, I won some time by just letting go of the idea I have to make art. And uh, sometimes, some days I just wouldn't draw and instead I would read, which was really nice as well. So this is one of the books that I got. I haven't finished it yet, so I will let you know if I, if I do, if I recommend it or not. But I just opened it up at sort of a random page. And here's tip 27, do what you like. There's also this quote from Henri Matisse, I think he's a fan he was a fantastic artist, I love his art. And he says, when I started to paint, I felt transported into a kind of paradise. In everyday life, I was usually bored and vexed. Starting to paint, I felt gloriously free. So I think this is all about following that flow, even if you've sort of lost it for a little while maybe it's the muse that you need to find again or maybe it's just a different tool you need to pick up to get out of a rut so i still do not have the answer and i think for everyone it's different but at least i'm making progress and uh, i can't wait to hear what nina has to say about this hi nina hi Koshi. It's great to see you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good, considering that I am st still sort of experiencing a creative block. However, I am slowly feeling a little bit looser and, and a little bit lighter. But first of all, I want to say that I'm super excited that you are going to be teaching in sketchbook school. Yeah, yeah I'm excited about that too. That's going to be so much fun. I mean, it, it will take a few months before we launch. We're working on the other lessons now, but um, it was so much fun to visit you and to film uh, your class. And I, I just really, really can't wait. I'm happy for you to be part of a faculty um, so I can actually pick your brain as well <laughs> um, and ask for help and, and expertise. So um, let me explain just in short what's been going on. Yep. So a few weeks ago, I suddenly realized that I was in some sort of a creative rut or call it a creative block. Um, I just didn't feel as excited when I was drawing. There was just this sort of a block that made me feel horrible about making art. And um, I was kind of confused about that because I actually draw every day and I, I don't don't remember having any blocks like these. I probably had them, but I might just have, you know, suppressed them. And luckily I am surrounded by a lot of people who make art and who might have experiences uh, to share and tips to share. So here I am uh, reaching out to you. Okay. <laughs> I know that you pick up challenges to just, you know, change your way of working. And you are also very productive always. At least that's what I take from 
uh, following you on Instagram and, and social media. So I'm really curious to hear your point of view uh, on the topic of creative blocks or creative ruts or the dip. Have you ever encountered one? Yes, I have. Not that serious, though. I mean, usually I feel like my biggest problem is that I don't have enough time um, to do all the things that, that I want to do, the ideas that I have. Um, but um, when I do like have a dip or something, I, I tend to either, well, two things. First, I the internet is good, I think. You find a lot of in inspiration there. I surf to my favorite artists or I check out... Um, well, f I have a lot of drawing friends on Facebook and Instagram, and of course there you can get inspiration. And But then also this, as you said, like challenge myself. I may just leave my ordinary tools at home and bring, I don't know, something else to draw with and just force myself out there to to draw with, I don't know, crayons maybe, just to like, you know, get out of it and start working a bit differently maybe just you know usually it it loosens up it loosens things up so i can get on with it and yeah once you start drawing you you're at it again you say you sort of force yourself to make art with some some different tool um some people say you should not push through if you feel this you should just yeah. wait it out no, we're different, i guess i mean it works differently for different people, I guess. So do you have any uh, examples of tools you picked up that really helped you to create something totally different? Yeah, well, um, Sweden is a bit cold and dark um, half the year, and that's a challenge in itself. And that's usually when the dip comes for me. That's like, oh, so now I can't go out anymore. And drawing indoors is fine, but not all the time. It gets too... Yeah, I don't know. Too much of the same, I guess. Same lighting, the same. I don't know. I want to get out there too. So, so then of course, um, ink, fountain pens, and watercolors doesn't. You know, they don't do the trick quite. So sometimes I've been out drawing with uh, like big mittens on, and and then you have to bring like big markers because you can't hold a pen in a normal way. You have to like. Ugh very uncomfortable but it's kind of fun because suddenly oh wow what's this it's this me you know you draw in a in a different style or, or manner it's it's kind of fun and from there maybe oh what if i could do that with my normal pens and i you know you find i usually find some inspiration in that or i bring just a pencil working pencil uh, which is always fine in any temperature. I've started using like alcohol in the watercolor water to prevent the colors from freezing. And then they they take a while to dry instead, but it gives some pretty neat effects to the to the watercolors actually, like almost crystal patterns and stuff. It's really so that's a lot of fun. You can't control it as well, but it's it's a lot of fun and it keeps the juices flowing sort of. It's it's fine. Yeah, so what you do actually is the circumstances, which are really physical circumstances, like temperature, um, you, instead of complaining about them, you just use them. Yeah, I try right? to, I try to. I complain a little too, but... I think you're allowed to, yeah. <laughs> S sit, sitting in your shorts in the sun drawing is just more comfortable than with big mittens on. <laughs> do you have more tips? I don't know. Um... I thought about what you said with forcing yourself out there, you know, like the very famous uh, quotation by Picasso that inspiration exists, but it needs to find you working. I really believe that. So if you can just keep at it somehow in some way with some kind of tools and then, um, yeah, it'll come to you. I don't know. It works for me, I guess. I, I think it's a good... Um, I often think about that quote. It's like, yeah, I have to keep going because the ideas will come. I just wrote that down. I know that quote and I love it. Um, it's, it also is kind of related to another quote or uh, another tip that I got. You just need to show up. Yeah. 
And I think even if you feel like you're just messing around or you're just, you know, going through the mud or whatever, you are, you are doing something at least. And that's also really why I enjoy doing these videos because I am creating something and it's totally different. And I learn from it along the way and I get to hang out with cool people. Right. Also, it's good to draw together with others. We have a, like a drawing group in Stockholm we've had for a long time and now it's turned into a, like an official Urban Sketchers local chapter. And that's really a good thing too, because now we have like every last Sunday of every month, we get out to draw together and the group is growing and we always end the session by looking at each other's drawings and, you know, commenting, comparing, asking, and, oh, you saw that. I didn't see that. Where was that? And you, you know, and that also makes you want to, hmm, I have to come back here next week just to, you know, keep working on this subject, for example, or try technique that he's using or you know yeah because there's um during those those kind of group outings there's always a lot of um tool talk and it's like oh what is that and then people are like oh yeah just use it today just give it back to me by the end of the day so you can really find out about new tools without needing to buy them and then of course you want to buy them you're right it it it, it pokes you a little bit yeah it does. do you ever um get students uh, in school that are like, help, I, I, I just don't know what to do. Do you give them any tips on that? Uh, in that? Yeah, it's different because it's, it's photography and design that you teach, right? Yeah, actually I do have like uh, regular arts as well. Um, yeah, but of course you do that. And I just, I think I try to give them kind of the same advice that I try for myself. Like, get out of what you usually do, try this instead. Or maybe you can just challenge yourself, throw this idea away, just do this, try this. And for many, I mean, many times it, it works usually. And they come up with the greatest idea instead, not even remotely close to the one I gave them. But, you know, just, you need to like snap out of it a bit. Yeah, start working on something else and it comes along, so. Yeah, snapping out of it and, and just changing your direction of thoughts, I think that yeah. really makes makes a difference. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. Um, where, where are you right now? I am uh, at my workplace. So I'm having a day off, actually, but I'm here because there are big tables that I can use for my own work when I do big, bigger pieces like paintings and stuff. I like to spread out. I need the surface. So I come here sometimes to, you know, just get the space and the overview and a bit of time to work differently. Like it's different to work in a studio than out, outside in the streets or wherever. But it's a great place to, you know, you develop another side of, of what you're doing. So you have a whole classroom for yourself yeah. without students in it. Yes. <laughs> what, what are you about to make? Or do you, uh, do you have any idea or are you just going to do whatever? I have a few ideas that I will probably work from some sketches today and then make watercolor paintings from them, bigger size. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't have the exact like subjects. I'm going to do this and this, but I just look for a sketch and I, mm, maybe I can do something with this. And then I start, you know, wetting the paper and just, yeah. You never know <laughs> what happens. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you go and uh, enjoy your day off uh, painting, drawing, whatever it's going to be. Thank you so much for your advice and your tips. It was great seeing you. Yeah, you too. And we'll see each other in class in Sketchbook School. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thanks so much. Yeah. Bye. Bye.